going to be working with a sculpted panel. These are um, sculpted MDF. They come in round and they come in square. Um, there's different sizes. This is the 12 inch round. And there's also different patterns that are sculpted into them. This one is called metal. So that's the style of the metal pattern. So it's a 12 inch round metal. I got this from Bear Woods. This is the label that was on the back. So you can see 12 inch round sculpted panel metal. And like I said, they have different sizes. Um, I think the smallest is four inches around, like coaster size. And then they do six, eight, 12. I'm not sure how big they go, um, but I, I have the 12 inch. And I've got several different styles of this. So I'm gonna be putting together a couple different tutorials because um, I'm gonna be making some different things, but um, this is the one I'm using today. And then this, <laughs> so um, because this is an uneven surface, you can see the, the ridges. If you try to pour on this, the resin's just gonna run out the edge. There's nothing to stop it. So you have a couple options. The company that makes these sculpted panels also makes what they call easy forms. And they're just a very thin piece of plastic, I think, that is cut to fit around the circle. So basically, you spray it with some mold release spray, and then you just tape it around your circle. And it's taller than the panel. So it's basically you know, kind of putting an edge around this. And then you do your pouring, you peel it off, you sand the edges, and then you pour like a flood coat to finish it. So that's one option. You purchase those easy forms separately. They don't come with the panel. The other thing you can do is create your own form um, or you can purchase, <laughs> and this is what I did. I purchased this form. Now this is from a company called Makers Reusable Molds, MRM. And this comes in pieces, so it's pretty heavy. Hold on one second, let me get this out of the way. So I have two hands here. So what this is, I already have it assembled and siliconed, so I can't take it apart. But it is this flat base, and then this wall, and then the brace. So the brace I can pop off, because that just goes around it, and that, keeps it from sagging. You know, when you have uh, a lot of resin in here, the walls might want to sag outwards. So this brace piece keeps everything nice and straight. And it has bolts. You can screw the brace to the bottom if you want to. I didn't um, because I'm not doing anything crazy with it. <laughs> so I didn't feel a need. But basically you put the insert there's a groove carved into the base. You put the insert in the groove, silicone everything around, and then up the little seam, and then you put the brace on. So this is a 12 inch round maker's reusable mold, and this fits inside. Now there is a little gap around the edge, which is fine. I'm gonna have to do some sanding anyways. No matter how you work with these sculpted panels, you pretty much have to do sanding. So I figured I'm gonna try it with this reusable mold and see if it's easier than the easy forms. So what I did, let me pop this back out. Um, so the sculpted panels are unfinished MDF. So what I did is I painted this top side with a pearl white paint. So you can see it's beautiful pearl white. And then the sides I left unfinished because I'm going to finish those um, with some metallic paint after I'm all done. And then the bottom is not finished. And I didn't finish the bottom because 
I am going to first pour a very thin layer of resin in here and set the panel in. And I'm gonna let that cure before I actually do the artwork that I wanna do on the top with the resin. I want to firmly attach the um, panel to the mold with some resin. And then putting that resin down first will basically give me a finished backside. So I personally like to have my pieces finished on all sides. So normally if I have a wood piece that's gonna be exposed, I'll paint the back or do something nice in the back. Um, but in this case, it's gonna be resin, so I didn't bother to finish it. So, so that's what I'm doing. My first step is just going to be pouring that very thin layer in here to let this um, kind of sit and cure. So I'm gonna mix up my resin and I'll be right back. All right, so I've mixed up three ounces of resin and I just put some white mica powder in here just to give it kind of a nice, I don't know, a pretty <laughs> look. And I thought that would look good with this pearl that's on here. So the reason that I'm doing this, I forgot to mention this earlier, is I've never used this mold before. I've never done this before. And I'm a little concerned that after I pour what I want to pour on here and the resin flows over the edge and seeps under it, it might lift it up. It might end up floating. And then the resin is just going to keep running off and running under. I don't know if that would happen, but it's possible. So in order to prevent that, I'm pouring this first layer of resin. I'm going to put the panel on, let it set, let it cure, so that the panel is stuck to the mold. It's not going to float. Um, and then as far as removing from this mold, I've been told you don't need to use mold release. Um, you just use a, um, I forget what it's called, one of those those mallets, <laughs> a rubber mallet, to kind of um, tap it and it, I guess, pops off. So we'll see. <laughs> I got my fingers crossed that I can get it out of here. Um, so here we go. So I'm just going to pour this in. And I've got three ounces here. That should be enough. It's probably a little too much, but I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. <laughs> and you could do this with clear if you want it to maybe paint the back of your panel. You could just do a clear layer back here. I thought about painting the back and putting my logo on it and then doing the clear to seal it in. But I decided I wanted a, a solid colored back. So, and I like how the mica powder looks. It's got that nice shimmer. So I thought I'd try this. I don't know, next time maybe I'll do clear, we'll see. Even though it's the back, I just wanna Get that out of there. So just use some heat to thin it out and then I'm just gonna tilt and let this run to the edges. You can get these Makers re Reusable Molds from Bare Woods as well as the panels. Um, and I will have a coupon code at the end of the video if you wanted to try these out, either the panels or the mold. You can use it for pretty much anything on the site, but I'll put that up on the screen at the end. So stay tuned for that. All right, so I'm just going to drop this in here. I'm going to try to keep it centered, but I don't know how... Good, I'm gonna do it that. I'm just gonna apply some gentle pressure. Try and make sure it's as centered as possible. 
There's a very small gap, maybe about a sixteenth of an inch gap all the way around. So I'm just trying to make sure that the gap's about the same because the resin is going to flow over the sides a little bit. Um, so I want that to be uniform if possible. So, all right, so I'm just going to let this cure overnight and then I'll be back tomorrow to do the pretty part. I'll see you tomorrow. Okay, I'm back. It has been about 24 hours or so. This is all nice and cured. I can see around the edges a little bit where the resin that I poured underneath is kind of risen up along the sides and it's not centered in here. Um, I actually did three more of these after I filmed the first one and I had the idea <laughs> to put a toothpick in between the panel and the mold on each side and then on the top and the bottom. So I just kind of push the toothpick down in there and that helps keep it centered. So my other ones that I did are centered, but this one, it looks like it, it moved a little bit while it was curing, which is fine. Um, because I, I, like I said earlier, I plan on having to sand around the sides anyways, after I demold this, but I just wanted it centered. So little tip <laughs> with the toothpicks. It worked perfect. So what I'm going to do um, for this layer, I've got five pigment pastes pulled out and then I've got some white. So these are all just resin. I'm excited about having these because I actually just got my order from Artist Till Death yesterday. So a bunch of these were in that order. Um, so I'm excited to try them. So the colors I'm using I've got the Midnight Violet, which is a really pretty dark pink burgundy color. This Satin Rose, which is almost like a salmony rose color. Red Phoenix, you can see on the top there. This one I actually just used this morning. This is like a reddish orange with just a hint of gold. It's absolutely stunning. Then rose gold. And I'm curious when I stir this up, if it's going to be more to the gold or more to the rose side. <laughs> and then this lighter pink called pink sherbet sherbet. Looks like just a nice pink color. So those are the colors I've got. And then I'm using the Mixel White from Bear Woods. And I mixed up six ounces. Um, I'm not trying to completely cover it. Actually, I don't want it completely covered because I still want some of this pearl white to show through. So I'm not sure exactly how deep six ounces is gonna go. Kind of an experiment since this is the first time I've actually used this particular sculpted panel. So I'm excited uh, to see how this is all gonna turn out. Um, so I divided up my six ounces. I have about a third of an ounce for the white. These four colors have about an ounce and a quarter maybe. And then this one has about an ounce. I didn't want as much of the dark pink as the other colors. This is more of like an accent color. So we'll see what we get. <laughs> So I'm going to mix the colors up. If you want to stick around and watch, feel free. Otherwise, go ahead and fast forward till I get to the pouring part. So I'm going to do four drops of the white. I usually do um, 10 drops to an ounce for a nice, like, solid, opaque white. So this is a third of an ounce, so I could do, you know, three to four drops would be fine to just get a nice solid white and I'm hoping that this gives me some cells mix all white is really good at making cells it does kind of depend what else you're using it with um, I found it works really good with pigment pastes so we'll see hopefully I get some cells with that all right the pink sherbet so all of these I'm going to use enough um of the pigment paste to make the color opaque. Um, 
So I'm not 100% sure how to measure these and tell you how much I'm using. <laughs> but if you decide to give this a try, I would just say use as much as you need to use to get an opaque color. So in about an ounce and a half, it's about um, a scoop. Woo, I don't want to dump that. Um, about that much. And they're all different. All the pigment pastes are different. Sometimes you do need a little bit more, especially with the shimmers. It seems those have a bit more transparency to them than like the cream pastes do. So with the shimmers, I found you do need a bit more than the non-shimmers, but every brand is different. And even within the brand, every color is different. So you just have to kind of play with it and see. When I mix these up, I always scrape my stick off because you scoop the pigment paste with your stick. And then as you're stirring, it doesn't all come off the stick. So you need to scrape it. Okay. Clean up my little mess here because I will stick my arm in it. All right, now the rose gold. Yeah, the top looks a lot more rose than the bottom. It looks like the gold probably settled. So you always wanna make sure you stir these pastes really well because they're made with powder and the powder is gonna settle in the liquid. If you don't stir them, you're gonna get a different color as you get further down into the jar. <laughs> oh, this is so cool. You probably cannot see this, but as I'm stirring, the light's hitting it and it's changing colors from gold to pink. This is absolutely gorgeous. Oh my gosh. It's getting thicker as I'm stirring. So that's that powder getting mixed back in. All right, I'll take a little scoop. Oh yeah, it's it's definitely a, a two-toned, it's an it's iridescent. It's a really nice rich pink. And it's got that gold in there. Oh I don't know if you guys can see. Let me see here. It's hard with my lighting. I think you can probably tell. Just beautiful. Alright, I'm gonna put a little dot on this lid. All right, next, the Red Phoenix. I just used this one earlier today for the first time in a sunset pour I did. And it is probably one of my new favorite colors. It walks that line between pink and orange, and then it's got this gold shimmer in there. Look at that. Ooh, so pretty. All right, next we got Satin Rose. So this does not look like an iridescent. It's still a shimmer though, but it's not, I don't think it's a color changing one. It's got kind of a dark, dark wine undertone to it. Again, you really need to stir these. <laughs> <laughs> the color is completely changed as I've stirred it. It's gone from a pink now to more of a 
wine color and it's gotten thicker again. I love the Just Resin pigment paste because the powder doesn't settle out of them. At least it hasn't so far on any of the ones I have. Um, I've got some other brands of pigment paste and the, the powder actually settles down to the bottom and kind of hardens. So not only do you have to mix it in, but you have to actually like break the powder up. And um, they're really, really hard to mix. So I love these just resin pastes. These are definitely my favorite. Of all the different pigment pastes I have um, in the little jars, the just resin, by far my favorite. And the colors are just so rich and beautiful. I get all of these from Artist Till Death and she ships stuff immediately. Like I put in an order and the stuff is out the door like right away. Which is a great YouTube channel too. All right, so there's that one. Oh, let me put a little, little drop on the lid. I like to do that because you can't always tell the exact color just by looking through the jar, especially the ones that have like a color shift to them. All right. This one's really thick. Wow. This is like toothpaste. Funny how they're all so different. And with the pigment paste, if you use less, you will get a, a transparent color or transparent resin. So I like that you can kind of control how opaque your colors are. This is just a really nice berry color. I have a dot on the lid, but when I mixed that one up, you can tell it was more transparent than this this time. So put another dot so I can see what it looks like when it's opaque. Okay, so now as far as pouring on this thing, let me make sure you can get this in frame. So the um, pattern kind of runs horizontally and I've decided I'm going to pour on an angle. I don't want to force the colors into horizontal lines. I want, I want it to be a little more random. And this darker color is going to be an accent and then I'm going to try adding some white at the end maybe to get some cells is my hope. So these four are the main colors. So I think, I'm still debating how to pour this. I think I'm gonna do kind of like a zigzag pattern. Again, I don't want it to look like there's a ton of lines, but I also, I don't know, I don't want it to look too planned, but I don't want the colors to blend a ton. I do want them to stay a little bit separated. Hopefully this is enough resin. Okay, I'm just gonna hit this with a heat gun, thin it out and try and spread it out a bit.
All right, so now let's see what happens with this white. If I can get some It is um, creating some interesting blending with the colors. Okay. All right. I think I'm going to leave that. All I'm going to do now is take my little um, wet wipe and I'm going to wipe off the tops of these flat spots. There's a few little flat parts in here that I don't want any color on because I want that pearl to really show up. All right, okay, so let me bring you down for a close-up. Let me wipe my gloves off first. Definitely don't need to get resin on my phone. Okay, so let me bring you down, and hopefully you'll be able to see um, some of those cells. really really cool stuff starting to happen and the cells will keep developing I'm gonna hit it with the um, torch a couple times to help help them keep popping out but absolutely beautiful and I love I'm loving this color combination hopefully it stays like this <laughs> we all know resin moves around as it cures so We'll see. It's not very deep. I think um, the deeper it is, the more it moves. So since this isn't very deep, I'm hoping it doesn't move a lot, but we'll see. All right, so I will see you tomorrow for the next layer. Hey guys, I'm back. <clears throat> so it's been about 24 hours now. Everything is, is nice and set up. And as I hoped, none of the colors really blended. Everything stayed nice and separate. Um, there's lots of nice lacing going on in some areas where the white is. It's just really pretty. But this is the base layer, so a lot of it's going to get covered up. Um, it kind of looks like I spilled a whole bunch of different kinds of juice in some ice cream. <laughs> it's not the prettiest layer, but um, it is meant to be like the under layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the next layer on. And I've mixed up six ounces of resin, which I'm hoping will cover everything completely. I don't wanna to have to come back in and do another layer of just clear to cover it all. So I'm hoping everything gets fully, all the wood here gets covered. So the colors I'm using for this next layer, I've got this Dusk Mica from Artisan. It's just a nice pink. Um, this is Colorberry. This is um, Moonstone Rose. This is just an interference uh, mica powder, and it's got a little tiny flecks of gold and then pink. And then I've got some Cast and Craft in white, and I'm not going to mix this up so it's solid white. I want this to be semi-transparent, and then I have some Copper Leaf, and then I'm also going to leave some clear. So, um, that's what I got going on here. So I'm gonna just grab some cups. Oh, get them out of my bag. I'm opening my store. Um, I'm actually opening a physical store. It opens on Friday and today is Monday that I'm filming this. So four days away. Um, and I am just completely overwhelmed with trying to get everything ready for that. It's crazy. Went there yesterday, we put the wallpaper up. 
all the shelving, put all the furniture together. It was such a long day. I'm still exhausted. <laughs> I came home and uh, went to bed. I, I took some leave and put my uh, feet up on the little massager thing and just went to bed because I was beat. It was so much work, but it's ready to go. Just have to... Um, I have an artist, I have a local artist that's coming and she's going to be putting my logo um, on the back wall. So she's coming out this week to do that. And then I'm going to go there either Thursday or Friday and take all my inventory and get everything loaded in. So oh, I'm so excited the day is finally here. When I signed the lease, it seemed like it was forever. Like I could just... You know no big no big rush <laughs> and of course i've been making product like crazy for the last almost six weeks just getting ready but it it didn't really seem real and now it does <laughs> now it's definitely real so i think by the time you see this video the store will be open so check out my facebook and my instagram if you want to see pictures of it um, and this piece will actually be in the store on the opening day. So I am making this for the grand opening. So yeah, my Instagram and Facebook are both Tifton Studio, just like my YouTube. So yeah, go check it out, but I'm super excited. I sell on Etsy and on my website, um, but I've wanted to do like a physical store for a while, but you know, I can't really justify having my own store. So I got this, a space in Painted Tree, which is basically like, almost like a, um, a year round craft fair almost. It's, uh, let me see. I'm just trying to decide on how much of this color to make one second. Um, but they have maybe a hundred different vendors in there. And it's in an old, I don't know what it, what the store used to be, maybe a Best Buy or something, but it's a big store. And there's probably 100 to 150 vendors in there, and there's all different size little booths that we all have. And everybody just kind of stocks their own products. Um, but the store handles the customers. Like, they handle the checkout and the returns and taxes and all that. So... I don't have to go there and work every day, which is awesome. I just get to make product and drive it to the store <laughs> and restock the shelves. Hopefully stuff sells. Um, that would just be incredible. If I am so busy with restocking my shelves, that would be a dream come true. Um, but yeah, I didn't want to do the craft fair circuit just because I don't like to be on the road that much. Um, I have a full-time job. It's just, it's tough, to, you know, that lifestyle is just pretty tough. And resin is so heat sensitive. I didn't want to deal with stuff, um, you know, warping in the sun or trying to make sure my booth was out of the sun. I didn't want to deal with that. So I thought this is probably the next best thing. And we'll see how it goes. They have a bunch of other locations in the state and they've even, I think they have 12 of them around the country, but I'm just gonna start with this one and see how it goes. And maybe I'll go into the rest, we'll see. All right, so I'm just gonna put one drop of this casting craft, because like I said, I want this to be pretty, you know, I still want it to be transparent. I don't want any, I don't want it to be solid. So this cup has about an ounce in it, ounce of resin. <clears throat> yeah, that looks good. It's kind of a still see-through. You can see the the um, stick through it. See, I gotta get everything labeled. I have a few more pieces to finish. Then I gotta get all my labels done and um, pack everything up. Get ready to head over there Thursday. 
I'm hoping Thursday. If I can go Thursday afternoon, get everything set up. But if not, then for sure Friday. And I'm just mixing some of this copper leaf into this clear. That's about the density I want. I don't want it overly heavy. I don't want the leaf to take over. All right, and then I've got a good amount of clear. I probably have just under two ounces of clear left. So between these three, that's probably three ounces total. All right, so I'm gonna just pour. I'm gonna start with the pink. I've kind of found, I've done a few of these now, and I found if you start with your most opaque, darkest color, and then slowly go to the lighter colors and then save your clear for last because you can pour the clear in areas where you want to move the color away and let the background show through. But if you pour the clear first, you don't really have any way to fix that if you've covered up something that you wanna keep. All right, and now I'm gonna pour the clear. All right, then I'm just gonna use my stick and push the resin all the way to the edges. All right, and now I'm just going to kind of blend some of these colors together. I don't want these harsh lines especially where the pink ends. All right, and I'm gonna pour this copper leaf in. So the leaf floats, which is nice. It's not gonna sink and get um, buried underneath the mica. Okay, <clears throat> I think that looks pretty good. I just wipe the stick off and then I'll bring you down for a close up. So you can still see some of that background work that I did in the last step. You can still see that through in some areas. That 
leaf looks really pretty. I'm trying to catch that iridescent. There we go. I can see a little bit of it kind of shimmering in there. So pretty. Lots of cool effects. That white, even though it was just one drop of that white, it, it does create a little bit of cells, not a ton, but that's okay. All right, so the next layer is just gonna be clear. I'm not gonna film that. You don't need to watch me pour clear resin, but that's just gonna cover everything. And then I'll come back when it's time to demold and do the flood coat. So I'll see you then. All right, I got the last top coat on. Everything is underneath. Um, a layer of clear, so it's ready to demold. Um, hopefully, <laughs> This will go smoothly. I've demolded one of these um, and it, it's not too hard. I am a little tool challenged. I do not have a ton of tools. So I think this would be easier if you have the right tools. You should have a mallet um, and maybe a chisel. I only have a hammer. <laughs> so, uh, so we'll see. Let's get this out. All right, so I'm just gonna lift off the brace. And then this edging comes off pretty easily. Or at least it did on the last one. There we go. This is just held in place with silicone. So then to reuse the mold, all you have to do is peel off the silicone that's left behind. It's super easy, it just comes right off. But I will do that later. All right, so this is the fun part, is getting it off this bottom board. So you can see how thick the piece is. All right, so the last one I got off, I tapped it on the back a few times. Then, this is where a chisel would come in handy, but I there's a little gap where the silicone kind of went underneath. I'm sure you can't see it, but I'm just getting the claw in there and gently trying to pry. And then it pops off. <laughs> so there you go. It's pretty easy. It's a, it's a really slick system. And there's some silicone on the bottom of the piece, which I will remove. So I'm going to go and sand the top of this. Um, I'm going to do two, two passes. So the first sanding I'm going to do is 60 grit. And I'm going to get rid of this lip that's on here. Let's see. I turn this. I don't know how well you can see that. But there's a lip all the way around. So I'm going to sand, get rid of the lip, get everything nice and smooth. And I'm also going to round the edge just a little bit so that my flood coat pours over really nicely. Um, and then i got to remove all this silicone. So I'm going to go do that. I'm going to sand, and then I'll be back to do the flood coat. Get rid all right, she's all sanded and ready for top coat. This is my favorite part, <laughs> when you put that top coat on and everything underneath just comes to life. So cool. <clears throat> so I have four ounces mixed up for the top coat.
All right, so now it's gone over all the way around, but there's a lot of just drips on the sides. It's not smooth on the side. So I like to use a smaller stick and just spread it on the sides. Just wanna make sure everything is covered. And if I need more resin, I'll just pick it up from where it's dripped off. Okay, and then I'm going to hit it with the heat gun and I'm going to go over the edges one more time. But this time, because it's fully coated, it should go over in a nice stream. All right, so now I'm just gonna do a hair check and you know make sure there's no little pieces of hair or dust on it. I'm gonna let it cure for 24 hours and um, the next step will be to sand the back. So let me bring you down for a close up. And see the edges are nice and evenly coated. So that's what you wanna go for. Make sure there's no like funny ridges or anything. It's hard to see with the glare from my lights. But like I said, I'm gonna do a dust and hair check and then sand the back tomorrow. So I will see you tomorrow. My house is such a mess. I have everything ready to head over to the store tomorrow. And I've been tagging things, but this piece is done. So I just want to take a look. It's so pretty. Turn it over so you can see the back. So I ended up um, sanding the back and I did 60 grit and then I did um, 120 and then I finished with 240 just to give it a smooth finish. It's not shiny, the back is matte, but that actually works good because my little stamp sticks better <laughs> to matte surfaces versus shiny. So, oh, I got one hand here. So there you go, it's all done. And I'm super, super thrilled. So if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, be sure and subscribe to my channel. And I will see you next time. <laughs>